Today we're taking a look at one of the most affordable smart trainers currently available on the market, the Van Rysel Decathlon D100. It's based on the Magen T110 trainer with a few differences in packaging and software support. The D100 sells for around €269 Euros with a Swift Cog and version 2 click controllers or about €50 Euros less without the Cog in its naked form if you can find it. That makes it one of the cheapest direct drive smart trainers on the market. But affordability always comes with trade-offs. And the real question is whether those trade-offs matter for how you plan to use it. What do we mean by a smart trainer? A smart trainer is a trainer that can broadcast data, typically power and speed, and sometimes cadence, over Bluetooth or AMP+. Applications like Zwift or MyWoosh can then take that data to simulate riding in the virtual world. Platforms like Trainer Row can use it for structured workouts. A smart trainer can also receive commands from these applications. This means that the app can control the resistance, whether that's to simulate a hill, headwind, or simply to hold you to a fixed power target in ERG mode. The D100 uses a flywheel with a claimed moment of inertia of 1.64 kilograms per meter squared. What does that mean? Well, the moment of inertia is a measure of how resistant a rotating object is to changes in speed. In other words, how smooth pedalling feels and how much momentum is carried between pedal strokes. In practice, this puts a D100 into the uh, moderate inertia category. Unlike high-end trainers or crank-based power meters, the D100 does not use string gauges to measure power. Instead, it calculates it based on two things. The speed of the flywheel, the rotational speed of the flywheel, and the amount of resistance applied to the electromagnetic brake here. Because of this, the trainer needs to be calibrated. Calibration essentially measures how long the flywheel takes to coast down from a given speed, allowing the trainers to compensate for friction and temperature effects. The Catalan quotes the accuracy is plus or minus 5%, which is typical for trainers in this category. In practice, accuracy is best during steady efforts and structured workouts, and less reliable during rapid cadence changes or short sprints. In theory, cadence can be inferred by detecting small variations in the flywheel speed caused by each pedal stroke. In practice, this method is a bit noisy and imperfect. So the D100 doesn't report cadence, and this has been a common criticism. Personally, I think it's a reasonable decision. A cheap external cadence sensor will give cleaner, more responsive data than an inferred value from a budget trainer. Let's talk about power limits, gearing and flywheel speed. The D100 reports power up to 600 watts. This limit depends not just on the electromagnetic uh, brake strength, but also on the speed of the flywheel. So as a flywheel, to move the flywheel faster, you need to put in more power through the pedals. And that to a certain extent, or to a large extent, depends on the gears you're using on the front. If you're using a small front chain ring, for example on a gravel or mountain bike, one by, you may not be able to spin the flywheel fast enough to reach the 600 watt ceiling. Particularly as a swift cog, if you're using a swift cog, it's only 14 tooth. Another thing to note is the trainer resistance will go beyond 600 watts, at least for short periods, but it won't actually report anything above that value. It's capped, and that's why some riders report that they're spun out on this trainer. On paper, the D100 is rated to simulate a maximum gradient of 6%. This number comes from the Bluetooth Fitness Machine Service FTMS protocol, which defines how resistance is applied in simulation mode. In reality, gradient numbers indoors are mostly a proxy for power. Watts are watts at the end of the day. If your one hour of power is 250 watts, typical for many amateur riders, it makes little difference whether that effort is shown as flat terrain or in a steep climb on the screen. Just to give you a real world reference, Pochkar recently set the King of the Mountains on the Col de Rat. He averaged around 400 watts doing that, well within the capabilities of this trainer. The limitation here isn't climbing power with this trainer, it's sprint power. Talking a bit more about the Swift Cog and Click, the D100 version sold by the Cathlon include the Swift Cog and Click controllers. The controllers are two Bluetooth controllers that work with Swift to provide virtual gears and steering. So that's your steering, those are your gear changes. 
Uh, that's useful for drafting and for changing the resistance while you're racing. Virtual resistance replaces mechanical shifting because you only have a single cog on the back. Um, and for riders who enjoy swift racing, especially sprint finishes, the 600 watt ceiling can be uh, a limitation. The D100 uses Bluetooth FTMS only. There's no AMP Plus support, so it won't easily, it won't connect to most bike computers or sports watches. That said, the FTMS is widely supported and the trainer works with a range of applications. Well, I'm going to show you next how to use a D100 with three different applications, starting from the simplest and moving towards a full virtual cycling experience. Setting up the D100 is uh, simple. There's a power supply, so it requires power for the electromagnetic brake and also to power the um, power and speed reporting. And you simply have to plug that into a mains socket. You see both lights are flashing. That means it's uh, booted up, ready to go. And to get it to connect up to an application, you need to pedal a bit to wake up the Bluetooth. And you see this light is now solid. So it's ready to connect to uh, an application that's out. It's uh, transmitting um, speed and power data. The first application I'm going to have a look at is a simple Android app called BLE FTMS. You can find it on the Google Play Store. It's a free Android app that connects directly to the trainer. It shows basic data like power and speed and allows manual control of resistance. And you can also use it to calibrate the trainer. And we need to select the trainer. We're connected and you can see speed reported, power. We can do calibration here. Normally set the resistance. Wait, that's a gradient maybe. That's uh, made it much easier to pedal. Yeah, 5% gradient. And I'm doing 113 watts. And for a calibration, it tells you to get up to 43 kilometers an hour. Which is going to be quite hard for this gearing. Yeah, and now stop pedaling. And it's doing a roll down. Calibration okay. So I assume that's calibrated now. So that's a simple little app to test the trainer. This is uh, Aoki, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a browser-based platform focused on structured training. There's absolutely nothing to install. It runs directly in a web browser, and in this case in Chrome, and I'm running it here on Linux. So it runs across different platforms. So it's, um, it's not a, it doesn't give you any videos or any of that kind of stuff. It's aimed purely at training. Key features are it supports swift.zwo um, workout files. So I've downloaded one for a ramp test, which you'll see in a second. It's full erg mode, resistance and gradient, it offers full erg, resistance and gradient modes. It can record activities of, as fit files and it integrates with Strava and intervals.icu if you're interested in that. So if you're probably interested in workouts rather than racing or a virtual environment, this pairs very well with the Van Riesel D100. And here we see we've gone to the first of the ramp and the resistance has gone up to 114. Next ramp and so on and so forth. So you see it's very simple, runs in the web browser, interfaces with the trainer, uh, changes the resistance on the back and uh, runs across all platforms. My Wish is a free alternative to Swift, offering virtual worlds, group rides and structured workouts. The D100 pairs directly with My Wish, but the Swift click controllers are not recognised natively. There are workarounds for this, like using applications such as QZ Fitness or Bike Control, which can map the controller inputs to my wish keyboard commands. However, this requires extra setup, and there's a problem with the Swift um, 2 controllers, Swift Play 2 controllers. They are kind of keyed to Swift, so you actually have to start the Swift app first, so you have a 700 megabyte download. Once you started the Swift app and paired with the Swift app, you can then pair with Bike Control or QZ Fitness, but it's a bit of a faff in that case. But, but, do you even need these Swift Play controllers? Well, if you're not really seeing the answer is a qualified no. For workouts or steady virtual riding, the application can control the resistance automatically. 
In effect, your bike becomes a single speed bike with an automatic gearbox. And this implies, re um, this implies riding and lets you focus on the cadence and effort rather than the shifting of gears. In this case, the cheaper non-cog version of the D100 combined with a single speed adapter makes a lot of sense. However, if you're switching bikes between different people, uh, maybe you're a coach or your different members of the family are trading one with a mountain bike and one with a racing bike, the Swift Cog uh, lets you swap bikes easily. So what do I conclude from all this? Well, despite the D100 being Swift compatible and bundled with a two month Swift trial, which is interesting, it's maybe not the ideal trainer for Swift, um, particularly for higher power sprints or when you're chasing after brakes, that kind of thing, because it's power capped at 600 watts. For most people, that's not a problem, but in those particular circumstances, especially for more powerful riders, that could be an issue. But where it shines is structured tra training, erg workouts, steady efforts, where the power range and resistance control are more than sufficient, providing your bike gearing allows you to spin the flywheel fast enough. The Swift Cog or single speed adapter is virtually silent, ideal if you live in an apartment or have a partner with sensitive hearing. If your priority is training rather than racing on a budget, and especially if you, ha if you value simplicity and affordability, the D100 makes a lot of sense.